All right, here is our last example for solving a quadratic equation using the zero factor theorem. Now, I put emphasis on the word zero because right now you do have some things that are factored, but the product is equal to two. We need that product to equal zero, so we've got to do something with that two, right? There is no two factor theorem. There's two factor authentication, but that's something totally different. Um, we've got to have this equal to zero. Well, here's the problem that a lot of students run into. If you try to move the two from the right to the left, it's a big question of where does it go? So here's what we need to do first. The first thing is to take the left side of the equation and foil that out. Take the 5x and distribute. Take the 4 and distribute. That should be your first task. So when we do that, distributing the 5x gives me 5x squared minus 5x and then we distribute the positive 4x so that's plus or positive 4 excuse me so that's plus 4x 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 and so now you see that if I need to subtract the 2 over there's plenty of room for it right there's a place for it to go uh, you've got a couple things you can do here you can go ahead and move the 2 over or you could take the time and go ahead and combine these terms from the middle. So 5x squared minus x minus 4 is equal to 2. All right. So now we need to get uh, 0 on one side. So we get that just by subtracting 2. So subtract 2 on both sides. 5x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. Okay, now we have 0 on one side. We just need to factor this polynomial. Again, 0 factor theorem. Equal to 0, factor, apply the theorem. All right, this is another one of those tricky problems where I've got a lead coefficient that's not 1, so I need to do the AC method off to the side. So AC method is going to take 5 times 6, that gives me 30, and I want to find factors of 30 that have a difference of 1. Oh, wouldn't that just be 5 and 6? All right, let's see how that works out for us. All right, so there's 5x squared. I need to have a 5x and a 6x here as we rewrite this middle term. But I've got to make sure I paid very close attention to my signs. Okay. The sign of the middle term is negative, which means the sign of the larger of these two terms must also be negative. And what's the sign of the 5 going to be? Well, this guy has to be positive. That way, when you combine these guys that are here in blue, that combines to give you negative x. See, if that guy were negative as well, negative 5 and negative 6 is negative 11. And that's not what we're going for. All right, so we split up the middle term so that we can factor. All right, so the common factor here is 5x, leaving us with x plus 1. All right, the second group, which begins with a negative, so that means the negative is part of the factorization. The common factor for 6x and 6 is 6. So when we, when we divide out that negative 6, when we factor it out, let's see what we get. So negative 6 divided by Negative 6 is just 1, so 1x. Negative 6 divided by negative 6. Still just the 1. All right, so now we see that factoring by grouping can finish because you have that common factor of x plus 1. That x plus 1 was connected to the two pieces, 5x and negative 6. And now that we have it factored, and equal to zero, not two like we had up here, we can now use that zero factor theorem to say x plus one is equal to zero, or five x minus six is equal to zero. So these are the two possibilities. We solve each of these. x is equal to negative one, or x is equal to, talk about the steps. To solve for x, you have to add six, 
and divide by 5. So here are your two solutions. So let's make sure we understand what happened in this problem. At the very beginning, this problem was not set up for us to go ahead and factor. We needed to move the 2 over first. But before I could do that, I needed to multiply the stuff out so that when I subtracted the 2, it had a place to go. Once I did that, I'm now at this step, and now it's quadratic. So it's quadratic, which right now means we just factor. Okay, That's what we know, but there are going to be other methods that we're going to talk about for solving things that can't be factored. So you want to stick around for that. Uh, split up the middle term, factor by grouping, and then finish by using the zero factor theorem. And there you go. Factoring is a skill that's never going to go away. So make sure that you are practice, practicing that all the time. And um, yeah, you're going to be all right.